using the TI Inspire CAS handheld. Video 2 Sketching Graphs with CAS. Part 5 Using F1 of X in Calculations. So, in this video, we want to look at how we can use the fact that we've defined a function by sketching a graph. So, here I've drawn the graph of x squared plus x minus 3. And in doing so, I've defined function 1 of x to equal x squared plus x minus 3. And that can be really useful, particularly if you don't have nice exact x-intercepts, turning points, y-intercepts, points of intersection, um, whatever it might be. For example, if I have a look at the x-intercepts here, I mean you can see from looking at the graph that they're not nice whole numbers. And if I have a look, so menu, analyze graph, zero, if I work out this x-intercept, so I can see this x-intercept happens at 1.3. Now that could be exact. There's an easy enough way to check this. Your CAS will always um, round everything to one, well it usually gives float two or three, which means it shows two or three digits of the answer. Um, so in this case we're only seeing 1.3. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's exact, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not exact. So in order to see whether this has been rounded, um, one way I can do that is to click on the number I'm interested in so that it's highlighted and then you want to right click which remember using your handheld is pressing control menu while you've got the number selected. Then we want to have a look at attributes and at the moment we can see that the current precision value is 3 and so I'm going to increase that so that I can see and you, it's hidden under that box there but you should be able to see that every time I increase the precision value I'm seeing more decimal places so this is by no means an exact value it's certainly not equal to 1.3 exactly um, so I want to be able to work out this exact x-intercept because I want to be able to draw it exactly on my graph so what I need to think about here is well what do I do in order to find x-intercepts? So I would in this case need to solve x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. Now you can go over to your calculator screen, so press the scratch pad bo button to toggle across there, and you could solve that. So menu 3, 1, solve, uh, what have we got, x squared um, plus x minus 3, we want to solve that equals 0 for x. That's essentially what we're doing in order to find those x-intercepts, letting y equal 0 and solving the equation. And so we get um, the exact values of our two x-intercepts. Now, I don't need to retype x squared plus x minus 3. It's not overly difficult, but in other equations it might be. And also it just required me remembering the equation. I might need to toggle back to see it. It's completely unnecessary because I've actually already stored x squared plus x minus 3 as function 1 of x. So rather than actually enter that whole thing, I would just type menu 3, 1 for solve, function 1 of x, and you'll see function 1's appearing as, a, as bold, and that's because there's something stored as function 1. And we want that. We want to make use of what's stored there. So we want to solve function 1 of x equal to 0 for x. Done. So it makes it nice and quick and easy to make use of that equation that I've got sitting over there in the graph. So that means that our x-intercepts are at negative root 13 minus 1 on 2 and positive root 13 minus 1 on 2. And that would be how I would label those two points if I were to draw this graph by hand. Obviously it's fairly easy in this particular equation to work out the y-intercept, let x equal 0, I can see that y is going to equal negative 3, but also that's easily evaluated if it were a different um, function, for example, using my already defined function 1 of x. So in order to find a y-intercept, I want to let x equal 0. There's nothing to be solved there, it's just evaluating an expression. So we're just looking at function 1 at 0 instead of at x. So we're replacing the x with 0, and we see that our y-intercept is indeed at negative 3. We could also work out um, stationary points, so in this case the minimum turning point. Um, that involves some calculus and depending on the year level you're in you might not yet have the tools to be able to do that but it would be exactly the same thing. Solve the derivative of function 1 of x equal to 0 um, in order to give you the x coordinate, substitute the y coordinate back in to find um, the coordinates of the point. In this case we'll see if we use analyze graph minimum 
there's our minimum point. If you actually have a look at these values, look at the attributes, increase the number of decimal places shown, it doesn't change the value. So this is in fact an exact point, negative 0.5, negative 3.25. Um, so finding exact values in the graphing screen can be ca can be difficult, but making use of the definition in the calculator screen to do so makes your life a little bit easier. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this um, minimum point just to make a bit of room here. Might get rid of this one as well while we're here. Another um, occasion where you might need to solve or make use of your definition um, in order to help you draw your graph is if you're trying to find points of intersection. So let's just add in a fairly simple linear equation as well here. So let's add in negative 3x. Now be clear with your handheld the difference between the subtraction button and the negative button. So the negative is the button to the left of enter. Um, so if you're trying to enter negative 3, you use this button. If you're trying to subtract 3, you use the subtraction button, which is above the enter. Okay, so we're going to draw y equals negative 3 of x. So we've got this line. We can see that there are, well, we can see one of the points of intersection, but we know that there'll be another point of intersection up here somewhere. So I might just adjust my window a little bit, a bit further, so that I can actually see those points of intersection. So you see things get crowded pretty easily. Um, you might want to delete your labels if they're annoying you. Um, okay, so we've got two points of intersection to find. So we know we can use Analyze Graph to find those. Analyze Graph 4 for intersection, somewhere to the left, somewhere to the right. So that looks pretty ugly. Let's get an idea as to whether that's exact or not. Mm, sorry. Oh, why does that keep doing that? Okay, so attributes. Okay, and indeed we can see as we add more decimal places, it certainly gets more and more accurate. So the rounded value that we had there um, is indeed rounded. So we want to find this, the coordinates of this point exactly. So again, thinking about well, what calculation would I do if I was going to do that by hand? So I'd be wanting to solve the quadratic equation equal to the linear equation. That is, solve function 1 of x equal to function 2 of x. Find where that's true. So over in my calculator screen, I'm going to solve, so menu 3, 1, function 1 of x equal to function 2 of x. Oops, of x. And again, we need to, when we're solving, solve for something. So in this case, we want to solve for x. And when we do that, we'll find the two, the x coordinates of the two points where these two graphs intersect. Now, obviously, we're going to need the y coordinates that go with each of these. So that would require us to substitute each of these values back into either function 1 or function 2. And that's also easily done with our calculator. So function 1 at square root of 7 minus 2. Now, generally, it can be quicker in this case, in a case like this, to actually just type in function one um, to type in square root of seven minus two. You can copy and paste, as we talked about in an earlier video. So you could scroll back up and just um, press your right arrow to get the cursor at the end of that line, and then use shift and your arrow to highlight the section that you want. Control C and then Control V. Um, but sometimes that's more fiddly than actually just retyping the expression. It depends how complicated it is. So obviously that was the um, easier one, so the positive um, x value. I might, while I'm here, copy this one so you can see how um, we'll use that. So control C, control C, and then again I want to substitute that into function 1 or function 2, wouldn't matter, same thing. So control V. So I can see, therefore, that my points of intersection, one of them is root 7 minus 2 and 6 minus 3 root 7, and the other point of intersection is negative root 7 minus 2 and 3 root 7 plus 6. So easy enough to find those exact points just with a couple of simple steps using your calculator. So that function definition is really important and it makes it really easy to work out exact values given that your calculator screen doesn't always give you exact values. So that's the last of my graphing videos. I hope you found them useful and um, yeah, I'll add in some more um, graphing elements as part of some of the other topics uh, as I continue to build up this series of videos. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for listening. Bye.